Welcome guys to another video. We have a familiar face on the channel. Some of you guys might have seen my review of TJ's Honda Del Sol with a K20 Type R swap way back in the day. He's back here on the channel with his Accord CB7, a car I know nothing about. So DJ, why don't you tell me a little bit about this car? You're obviously a Honda fanatic. You had the Del Sol, bought an NSX shortly after that, and now you've got this. So tell me a little bit about this car. This car is the car that I learned how to drive stick in in uh, high school. My buddy's girlfriend had one, a maroon one, and we used to just go out and she'd show me how to drive stick in it. And then my buddy in high school had a DA Integra, and same vintage and everything. And I learned a lot about working at Hondas and just like the whole, the whole kind of Honda motif and aesthetics through that guy yep. and then once I became like a purebred Honda guy yeah this is the car that I would use in conversation when I would you know a VW guy would be like oh, it's all about the golf I'd be like bro <laughs> what about the 1990 Honda Accord you still see those things everywhere you know yeah and I noticed that I'd be using this car in reference a lot it got to a point where I was like Shh, why, don't, why don't I get one you know if yeah. I, I always use this as a reference so much I why don't I just bet you know eat my own words and, yeah. and get it myself. When I got the NSX, I needed a daily driver and I got a CM7 Accord in 2004. Okay. And that was my first time, I was, I've always been a Civic guy. That was the first time where I was like, oh dude, Accords, I don't know if it was the, the, the age in me or what, but yeah. I was like, I like this, this Accord yeah. is tight. And then my dad, he had a beater one of these. Uh, I'm talking driver's window wouldn't go down, 300,000 <laughs> miles, like just a real bucket. And one time he wanted me to drive it to meet him up somewhere. And I was like, yeah, I don't want to drive this thing. I drive it like 10 feet and I'm like, dude, what is it about this car? This yeah. is so fun. Yeah. So then I found it on Craigslist, dude. I sold my CM7 for 3,500 bucks. And I picked this car up for $2,000 nice. from the original owner. At first I was like, cool, this is gonna be a great daily driver that I, that I know how to work on. And the community kept, keeps telling me, hey man, your car is super beautiful. And I'm like, who's saying that this old Accord is beautiful or gorgeous? And I kept getting that. And man, the more I would look at it, the more I'm like, damn, dude, it's, it's tugging on my heartstrings too. Now I'm starting to see the beauty in it. Yeah, yeah. You know? And uh, long story short, yeah, I, I get this car from the original family that owned it. And it's been a restore job. It definitely didn't look like this when I got it. It was chalk white and squeaky. Honestly, I, I haven't loved a car this much since my Dell Soul, dude. The NSX is a different kind of love. Yes. This yes. is really like, oh man, like, you know when you, like, love is real, like when you, like, yes. you can feel it. I understand that that sort of mentality when it comes to cars. Like, yes, you have an NSX, every Honda guy's, like, dream car, poster, whatever. But it's not a car you can just, you can't, but you, most people can't just drive that car every day, park it wherever they want, and just not worry about it and enjoy it fully to its potential. Yeah. But a car like this, you can to a much greater extent. With the exception of like in the Bay Area, it's probably not that safe to park it outside. Like, no, in sketchy no. Areas. I, I think this is the car that coined the term the most stolen car in America. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I don't know if you probably noticed, we haven't talked about the aesthetics, we'll get to it later I'm sure, but I've got three different locking lug nuts on every wheel. Oh really? <laughs> a kill switch, a removable steering wheel, I mean like, yeah, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not messing around with it. I, I feel you. Yeah. You've got it lowered, you have TE37s on it, what else have you done to it? Yeah, uh, so most of my builds, I like to kind of keep the original bumpers and keep the original body I just more of a driver than a wrench although I'm a wrench too but I just like my cars to just be that period correct kind of the NSX you know the NSX tax pretty well and if you want to lift yes. you're gonna be paying like yes yeah. you want the C West lift you're gonna pay at least 400 bucks or something yeah. I got this front lip it's a Mugen replica this and the rain guards for 60 bucks on eBay <laughs> shipped for all of it nice. <laughs> um, the generic kind of parts are so cheap for this car but the JDM headlights and the JDM side moldings, that is like NSX prices, man. Oh yeah, I bet. I think I'm like the fourth wave of owners with these cars. Okay. And all those parts are picked dry. It's hard to get stuff. Gotcha. This is a California smog compliant vehicle, unlike the Del Sol that I got right, last yes. time. 
Um, so you're rocking 130 horsepower, 130 torque. Yep. Um, but it, I went ham on the uh, the suspension and the brakes. So it's got a function and form coilovers, camber kits. What are what are suspension parts? I've changed those. <laughs> okay. We'll include the full mod list. Yes. You can send it to me later. I'll put sure. it in the video description for sure. you guys who really are curious. So you said the engine in this thing is it's an F22? Yeah, so the F series is basically a single cam H. Um, H series motors and transmission, they all bolt up together with all this. Okay. Um, I'm looking at maybe getting an H series one day when I feel like I'm too slow. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's basically a, it's a, it's a big motor. Hon uh, Civics of this vintage are running around at 1.5, 1.6. This is a 2.2. It's a 2.2, right? yeah. I didn't weigh it, but it's, I think it's like 2650, just shy of 2700. Okay. Um, it's a sedan, and I always tell people it's, 500 pounds lighter than a 350z <laughs> yeah at least yeah i gotta say one of my favorite things about this era of not just hondas but cars in general especially jdm cars visibility man it's so good yes. this reminds me of my nsx i'm yeah. sure you get the same vibe mm -hmm. where you have this really wide low dash and you sit you actually sit a little higher than you would yeah. ideally want for like aggressive driving yes. but the benefit is you get such a good uh, view of the road you see the hood perfectly you can see you know where those two front tires are with the wheel arches yeah super thin a pillars massive fishbowl glass all around yeah. no blind spots in this thing nope. perfect for resting your elbow on the side here that's what i tell people man like they're, dude it's a beautiful bright sunny day when you get to drive this car with all the windows down it's like the airflow plus like new cars if you want to put your elbow up exactly you're kind of like putting it way up even in an s2000 you're kind of like that yeah in yeah. this car you can hang your your armpit out and like yeah. almost touch the floor it's so you know? comfortable yeah it's very atmospheric inside I, yeah. I love that so much and then you can see about this old school rally mirrors yes panel make so the like, visibility even better is this adjustable bolster in here it's not because it's actually like you, I mean, you can tell it's designed for like a it's Japanese that, it's that corduroy, body style. Bro. It's plush. It's comfortable. It's not leather, so you don't have the problem of it getting too hot this summer. It's just it's simple, but it works. And everything about this interior follows that mantra. Everything oh, is simple. So this uh, I want to say like infotainment system stack. But no, it's <laughs> definitely not that. Yeah. Um, this like a in, like a what center console? Center console. Or, it's so like. Uh, and it's so businessy. I don't know. There's something about it that feels open and it's just not on you. Yeah. And then you got this tray. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you don't what? see that now. Yeah, what is that? Yeah. Just the ergonomics that they engineered into these cars back in the day. Like nowadays, you feel that they're trying a little too hard to over stylize the interior. So you end up like losing a lot of the basic things. Like the tray here, for example. The yeah. tray here. I used to have a 99 Civic SI. M1. Oh, I know sure. that's like you know quite a bit Electron newer blue? than this. No, I had the flamenco black. Oh, dude, why'd you sell it, bro? I, I, I was sold it now. I was an idiot for selling it. I'll, I'll admit it. It's all right. I got a laundry list of cars. I was an idiot for selling. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this gives me kind of a similar vibe. Obviously, this is a bit older, a couple generations older, but mm -hmm. the same simplicity, the same ease of use, the same lightweight feel to the controls, the steering light but you get good feedback shifter is typical honda you know front wheel drive shifter which is it's not the most precise thing in the world it's not like an s2000 or an nsx yeah. shifter yeah. you have this like tall shift lever that's mounted kind of low but it falls to hand well everything about this super ergonomic the uh, commercial for this car or the ad or the uh, slogan if you will was everything you need nothing you don't that's a pretty good way of describing yeah. it yeah sides of the new Honda Accord, except one. You have to drive it to believe it. Flip a, flip a Yui here and see what this thing's like when yeah, you rev yeah, it out. Absolutely. Oh, what's the red line? 60, is that 6300? I would, I would shift at 55. 55? You'll feel around 55 that it starts to get a little engine vibration. Got it. Does it have ABS? No. No, okay. Very momentum driven. Oh, absolutely. I think you'll have fun even in the third hand. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, dude. Very slow steering ratio. Yes. 
typical for any car of this era. But at least it has power steering, so it's easy to control. Yeah, and it's a old school hydraulic power steering, so it still retains a lot of the feel. Yes, a lot of feel, a lot of feedback. You can really tell exactly what the front tires are doing, actually. Yeah. And you can probably, you're getting it to rotate, too. Yeah. Which is amazing because I've got no sway bar. Look at that. Oh, no sway bar. No, dude, it's an LX, it's not an EX. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm looking, and it's got drum brakes in the back. Too. Drum brakes in yeah. the back, no kidding. My friend tracks his drum brake fit, and he says it's fine. Is it? Okay. Yeah. So five-speed manual, so the gear ratios are a little long. Yeah. But this engine's not, it's not a VTEC streamer, so you don't, it's actually okay that the gear ratios are a little longer. Yeah. You don't have to keep it super high RPM. Yep. Definitely getting those old school momentum car vibes. Heck yeah. Easy to heel toe, that's always good. And because this engine isn't all that powerful, you don't have much torque steer. Yeah. You can get on the power so early out of corners without having to fight the car. Newer cars, you know, like the turbo four-cylinder hatches of the world, front, front drive hatches, the Focus STs, the GTIs, and even the Civic Type R, the new Civic Type R, you really have to be a little bit more patient coming out of corners. You're sending so much torque, like 300 foot-pounds of torque through the front wheels, even with an LSD. There's only so much you can do before it just starts plowing. Yeah, if you're taking a corner in this, you still have enough time to put your hand on the dash and tap it and say, good girl. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna have to give this van a little bit of space. This car is way too fast for that van. <laughs> yeah, dude. Do you know the, su the suspension of this car? Is it McPherson struts or is it double, double wishbone? wishbone front and back, baby. No way, okay. Dude, there's a thing about this car, man. This era of Japanese, consumer goods. Yeah. I'll just put it in that entire bubble. But it's the same way that the Nintendo Entertainment System still works. You can yeah. blow in the cartridges and that thing just turns right on. Yeah. There's something about the pride and the people working on stuff. And in this era, there's something special, man. Just quality engineering. Yeah. All and around. Honestly, man, I mean, the NSX was so important. This car is ripping it up. This is awesome. <laughs> it's great. Um, the NSX was so important and it was going to sell so many cars being the flagship that not only did it go out being amazing, but everything else <laughs> went out with it to be yeah. in that premium quality. That makes sense. This car shares parts of the NSX. It's like right? trickle down tech. Yeah. yeah. It, I mean, like a hood prop and like the clock and stuff. Like uh -huh. That's all NSX. Oh, yeah, it's the same clock. Yeah, it's a trip, dude. Stop tech brakes. Oh, okay. I was going to say, the brakes are good. Yeah. When no you said, stainless lines yet. Okay. Because when you said uh, no ABS and, yeah. and rear drums, I was a little worried for a second. No, I got stop ticks. Okay. Yeah. No wonder. And Motul 600. Ah, okay. No, no brake fade here. No. Yeah, you can rip. Oh, I see what you're saying. Above 5,500, it vibrates a little. Yeah, yeah. Just carry speed through the this corners, no awesome. problem. Bro, what the this thing might, I think this smoke my dull soul out here. Yeah? Well, you can just drive it so much harder. Yeah, you're not just holding it back constantly. Yeah. This day and age, it's the land of the Teslas, dude. And yes. I feel like it's more important to have to retain the experience that the car gives you rather than just trying to make everything fast at yeah, this point. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, because I mean, in every light, bro, the Tesla next to me wants to just smash on me. <laughs> so it's like, all right. And, and that, oh, dude, another thing about this car, too, a couple things. It's so old that in Sunnyvale, high school students don't even drive cars this old. Really? Yeah, Let's dude. I think a lot of people get carried away in that the, the rat race, and they want the the best car with the best parts on it to get into yeah. that, that echelon. But, dude, you're, people are missing the, the bar, dude, because to be at the top of the CB game would only really cost you, like, $10,000, and uh -huh. you'll be, like, the man with yeah. this car, dude. Yeah. Like, honestly, <laughs> like... Yeah, like, I mean, people kind of stopped doing these things. They're not really out. I don't think people are souping them up yet. Yeah, I got to say, you know, I, I have an eye for Hondas for sure. Maybe not to the same level that you do, but I've been a Honda guy my whole car career, I guess you could call it. I've never noticed the CB7. I didn't know the, the the body, you know, code, so I had to look that up. It's not one of those Hondas that I see all the time or I see in, like, tuner magazines. This car is the epitome the looks of it is every car from the early 90s put to one yeah. i mean i 
joke around with Honda vlogs, Kristen, all the time, but yeah. like, if you just look at the corner panel, it's like a Fox body. If you look at the yeah. front, <laughs> it's like an old Torino almost, like yeah. 86. If you, it's like all these different angles that it looks like a different car. When I went to car shows back in the day, sometimes people would put like the one piece headlights or the red and white taillights on it. And I'd be like, oh dang, look at this Sylvia. Oh, that's not a <laughs> Sylvia. And I get to Honda Accord and they're like, oh, what the f***? Yeah. Never thought about it. <laughs> Sorry if I cuss on your channel. No but... worries, man. My, my channel's already <laughs> in the dumps. It's already a... <laughs> yeah. No, but this thing's a lot of fun. It's it's not... A, it's not. Look, it, this car's not meant to... It wasn't a sports car. It's not a sports car. You throw a few mods on it, you can't expect it to pull 1G in the corners. And you're not going to hit 60 in less than 6 seconds, you know? I mean, 6 seconds is considered slow as hell these days. This is probably more like an 8 to 9 second car. Yeah. But it doesn't matter because... It's the experience of driving it around at three tenths of its capability. Even it's it's an experience. It's fun. You don't see these on the road. They're easy to work on. They're reliable. They're they're a good car to own, objectively. Mm -hmm. And when you drive it around, it does it doesn't feel like you're in something ancient. It's not like you're driving it around on like a 1970s muscle car. Yeah. This thing's easy to drive, just like any other Honda from the 90s onward. It's, Dude, it's and easy it's, to drive. It's got really old components on it. I didn't, it's not like I replaced anything in the motor. Uh-huh, yeah. Know, it's got 31 year old piston rings and, oh, dude, drum brakes, e-brake turns. You can't <laughs> do those in disc brakes. I just realized like, oh, really? yeah, I used to try to do the front wheel drive, like e-brake turn back yeah. in my Del Sol stuff and like you can kind of get it. Dude, this thing, hard. I mean, it, lo it locks oh, really? and it hooks them, dude. You don't need power to have fun necessarily. Yeah, I, I, I would say in the canyons and on the street, you don't need the power to have fun. On the track, obviously, this thing is going to be woefully underpowered, especially on a power track like Laguna Seca. Yeah. I mean, props to you if you track it. I don't know if you do, but oh, like, I okay, go yeah. for it. Yeah. But you know, for me, this is not a car I would personally want to track. It's just a car I would want to enjoy on a daily basis and get the full experience of it, like the full use it to the fullest of what Honda's engineers designed it to do. I think the Honda guy in me, it's like, you know, the, the underdog syndrome of being a, a Honda guy? <laughs> well, some Honda guys, I think like myself, want to be the underdog of the underdogs. They just blow people's minds that this little dude out here is like, just going full send and yeah, stuff, yeah. you know? And I think that's fun. When you have a really fast car and someone's putting pressure on you, you feel like you're doing a disservice to the car. Mm -hmm. But when you're in something like this, if you're just and you're pushing the putting the pressure on something that's way more expensive yeah. you feel like cool you know you're like oh, what's up dude and you, yeah. get the fly, you get the wave by by something you know it's way quicker <laughs> if i had one of these i think the ultimate setup not ultimate but like a reasonable setup swap in as, as we were talking about earlier like an h22 I wouldn't want 300 horsepower K24, sure. so that's too much for this car. <laughs> that's when stuff's going to start breaking. Yeah. But like right around that 200 horsepower mark. H-Series is the way to go, man. The prices of those things haven't skyrocketed yet. People haven't really realized the potential of them, yeah. and it's a direct swap in here. Okay. So. I forgot to also mention, I'm running a 12-inch sub with a 2,000-watt amp in the back. <laughs> this is a daily driver. I didn't gut the interior. It's a lot of fun. I mean, you, you, get, you get what you paid for and then some. I mean, for 1,500 totally. bucks, totally. Jesus. That was sick, dude. Well, this was fun. Just, uh, you know, just got out of a Chevy SS 415 horsepower V8, hopped into a surprise car that I wasn't expecting to review, uh, a 911 uh, GT3 with 500 horsepower, and then hopped into this thing with 130 <laughs> horsepower front wheel drive. This type of car is what I started the YouTube channel on. I mean, yeah. the Del Sol was one of those examples. You took a long break, and then I saw you did a Corolla or something recently, or maybe it was a Sentra. I, I kind of forget. Oh, the... Um, Infinity Primera. That's what. Oh, yeah, that's Primera. right. Yeah. I was drooling when I saw that. I was like, oh, I love that old school Japanese yeah. stuff. So I hit yeah. you up right after. I was like, dude, you got to do my CB. And then as yeah. soon as you said yes, I was like, I got to spend another fifteen hundred dollars and get well, this thing a little bit better. But. I'm glad I uh, I reviewed that Primera because I wanted to make sure my viewers don't re don't think that I'm like completely off the deep end with Porsches. Like obviously, I like Porsches. I have a Porsche now, but. These types of cars are the cars I grew up lusting after. Mm -hmm. To the average car enthusiast, it's just like, what is that? It's a piece of crap. It's like, it's just like some random old Japanese car. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. But if you know, you know. The good new, the good thing is everyone and their aunt had one of these. And I've had Hellcat owners pull up to me and kind of brap, brap. And I'm like, what does this guy want? And they yeah. go down the window like, yeah. dude, I love your CB. It's the cleanest one around. And I'm okay. like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I think it's, it's like... It's really just going back to our to my roots, and I mean, you're still living in your roots. You got the NSX and you got this. You're living the best of both worlds. 
Something about uh, you have to keep it maintained for it to get you there. Yeah. I like that thrill a little bit. And yeah. if it, you know, if I take it on a road trip that I know it did it successfully because I've been properly maintaining mm -hmm. my vehicle and that's something that I really take a lot of pride in and my Honda CRZ was just never going to break down on me. It was a little boring a because little boring. of that. Yeah, and I feel one more quick thing. I mean, people are talking about the post-apocalyptic vehicles. Everyone's on this like... Uh, on these big, you know, forerunner hypes and stuff. And yeah. you still got to take those things into the dealership to reset codes and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think this thing might be the real post-apocalyptic vehicle. You can just run yeah, into a picket pole and pick, it. A, pick up a piece and exactly. make it work. That's such a good point. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again, DJ, for Dude, letting me uh, cool. drive this car. Welcome back to the channel. I'm sure the viewers will be excited to see you again. <laughs> um, let me know what you guys think, not just the CV7 Accord and this particular one, but old Hondas in general, old, old cars, that are cheap to buy and really require that level of extra care and customization to, to bring it to the point where like you really feel like a part of the experience. Like you said, like you love your NSX, but mm -hmm. it's a different kind of love. Yeah. This is like a car that you drive every day and you love it because you're so intimately familiar with it. Yeah, it's just a rewarding car to own. I love it a lot. And I, and <laughs> I hope I single-handedly raise the value of these cars because <laughs> I don't see them out anymore and they're still out there for, I've seen one yesterday, a coupe, a clean one for 700 bucks. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll check Craigslist in a, a year from now and see, and see what's going on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll see, man. I think fifth gen preludes and CBs are the next thing to go up. That's you just, might be right. You might so. be right. All right. Thanks guys for watching. I'll see you next time. The Accord from Honda. Once again, it's what the competition is shooting for. Nice shot. <laughs>